Hello, my name is Beth Dixon and this is a video of Vicki Borlaug's PowerPoint for Math 1530 Probability and Statistics course at Walter State Community College. And thanks to Ms. Borlaug for allowing us to use her PowerPoint. I hope this video is helpful in teaching you some basics about probability. Let's look at this slide. Probability is a number between 0 and 1. Inclusive, meaning that it includes both the 0 and the 1 and all the numbers in between. And it describes the likelihood of an event happening. Notice the range of values that a probability can have from 0 to 1. It can have any of the values in this range. And impossible events have a probability of 0. That would be like the probability of picking a girl at random from a list of an all-boys baseball team or the probability of picking a pink ball from a bucket containing five red balls and ten purple balls. Events must happen, events that must happen have a probability of one. This would be like pick the probability of picking a boy from a list of an all-boys baseball team. You're going to pick a boy. The probability of picking a day of the week that ends in Y. It's like saying there's a 100% chance of something happening. Events that are equally likely have a probability of 0.5 or 1 half. That would be like flipping a coin and getting a head, or flipping a coin and getting a tail. They're equally likely to happen. That would be like the probability of ha when having a baby of having a boy, or vice versa, of having a girl. That would be the probability of answering a true-false question correctly. Probabilities greater than 0.5 are more likely to happen. Those would be events such as the New England Patriots making the playoffs in football, as much as I hate to admit that, or the chance of rain on a cloudy day. They're, it's more likely to happen than not. Okay, Probabilities less than 0.5 are less likely to happen, such as the Miami Dolphins making the playoffs. This is not necessarily impossible, but not likely. Um, and as much as I would like to say that they're improving, maybe not so much. Um, let's move off from football and go to, again, the chance of rain on a sunny day. Not impossible, but less likely. Or the chance of me winning a lot the lottery. And as we move, notice it's a continuum of values. The closer we are to zero, the less likely the event is to happen. The closer we are to one, the more likely the event is to happen. So if we say that there's a 70% chance of rain, that's more likely to rain than saying that there is a 40% chance of rain. Probabilities cannot be negative. Zero is the smallest we can get. They cannot be larger than one. We can't have a more than a hundred percent chance of something happening. One is the largest that they can be. Let's look at this example. There are four yellow balls 
11 blue balls and one red ball and one ball is selected at random. So we have a bucket and it has some balls in them. And we're going to randomly select one ball at random from this bucket. So let's look at letter A. Find the probability of selecting a yellow ball. Well, the first thing we want to do is find the total number of balls in our bucket. We have 4 yellow, 11 blue, 1 red, 4 and 11 make 15, plus 1 gives us 16 total. And notice that we're going to use the notation P for probability, then in parentheses the word yellow to remind us that we're trying to select a yellow ball. It's just notation, but we'll use this um, as our uh, official notation, and we'll read that the probability of yellow equals and then the next thing we want to notice is that it's because we're selecting one at random these are equally likely so counting can be used to calculate the probabilities so how many yellow do we have well we have four yellow out of the 16 so that's four sixteenths I can take the calculator and while well, I can just reduce it or take the calculator and divide it 4 sixteenths would reduce to 1 fourth I could write that as 1 fourth or 0.25 and that would give us the probability of selecting a yellow ball is 0.25 or I could say that there is a 25 percent chance of selecting a yellow ball if I wanted to write it in percent form Let's look at B. There are four yellow balls, excuse me, find the probability of selecting a blue ball. Again, the probability of blue is, again, because we're selecting it at random, and these are equally likely, so all I have to do is count to calculate the probabilities. There are 11 out of 16. So that's 11 over 16. I could you leave it in fraction form or I will divide it out. You'll just take your calculator and divide 11 divided by 16 and get 0.6875. And that's the same as saying that there's a 68.75% chance of selecting a blue ball. Now let's look at letter C. Find the probability of selecting a red ball. Probability of red. Again, it's selected at random, so they're equally likely. So that means there's one red out of the 16, so that's 1 over 16, a 1 in 16 chance, which is 0 0.0625. And notice that I leave all my decimals, in this case I've been rounding my decimals to four decimal places. You will need to ask your teacher uh, how many decimal places to round your probability and that can vary depending on your teacher and some teachers are more strict about your decimal places than others but for our purposes I will round our decimals to four places so that when I round my percents I still have two places after the decimal because when I move my decimal over two places that'll move it zero and then after the six it gives me six point two five percent chance of selecting a red ball and in this case I'm doing this for emphasis most teachers will allow you to just to leave it here unless it's asking for the percent okay next I have two exercises two examples for you to look at and to try your handout to keep these videos short I'm going to stop and pause here I'll give you the answers for these problems in the next video in part two of this series